Hello, my name is Rona Payne and I'm a student support tutor here at NESCOL. And today's session is how to write a CV. So during the session, I'm going to go through the different sections to include in your CV to help your CV stand out from the crowd and help you to get through to the interview stage for your part-time or full-time job. So firstly, an overview. So these are the different sections that you'll need to include in your CV. So start off with a personal information, then include a personal profile, education, work experience, voluntary experience, if this is applicable, then on to hobbies, awards or certificates, if these are applicable, and finally references available upon request. And I'm going to go through each of these sections in turn. So to start off, personal information. So include your full name on your CV and include your contact details. So your phone number and your full address so that your employer can easily get in touch with you. Don't include your date of birth and also don't include a photo unless this is requested. So the next stage is your personal profile and many people find this section quite difficult because they're not sure what to write. But here are some simple things to make sure to include. So firstly, state who you are. For example, current H&D student with a passion for graphic design. Then what you're looking for. For example, seeking employment in the design industry your specific skills, knowledge and experience. And in this, try not to include common words. Many people in their personal profiles include things like that they're trustworthy, that they're hardworking, etc. But that doesn't make you stand out because um, these are so commonly included. So think about what skills, what knowledge and what experience is specific to you and that's what you include in your personal profile. And remember that your personal profile should only be a couple of sentences. So let's go on to your education. So start off with your current course and then go on in an anti-chronological order. So what you're studying at the moment and then perhaps what you've just finished studying um, and later on um, school qualifications as well. It is important to highlight specific projects that you've done, skills learnt or relevant units from your courses in this section. So you can include details such as that you are a class representative for your course, if you, for example, did a specific unit in your course, which is relevant to the job you're applying for, or perhaps a group project, which shows that you've developed teamwork skills and have developed transferable skills, which employers are looking for. So including these details helps your employer to understand what you've gained from this qualification. And that extra detail is really useful for them. Then go on to work experience. Again, start with your current job, if you have one, or your most recent job, and then go in an anti-chronological order. If you have lots of experience, if you've had lots of jobs, then you don't need to include all of them. Just include the ones that are most relevant to the job that you're applying for. And remember, it's not a job description. When you're including details about each of the jobs that you've done, try to make it specific to you, your responsibilities within that job, and skills that you developed within the role. If you can, try to evidence these skills that you've developed with specific scenarios or events. Then write about your voluntary experience if you have any. This should be laid out in a very similar way to your work experience. So include any relevant volunteering and again, your responsibilities and skills you developed within that role. 
It is particularly good if you've done some voluntary work for a couple of years or so. Something that shows a real commitment. And it doesn't matter if this voluntary work isn't directly related to the job because it's still showing these transferable skills and good work ethic which employers are looking for. Then go on to your hobbies. And this can be clubs or groups that you belong to, any interests which show dedication, such as music grades that you've got or are working towards, or a boxing club that you attend once a week. Something that shows you're spending a lot of time doing this and you're working towards something perhaps. Also include if you have any positions of responsibility, such as your football captain for your team. And then there's a section for additional information. So this could be awards or certificates that you've gained, something like um, the Voluntary Awards, Duke of Edinburgh, Saltire Awards. It could be awards or prizes you gained at school, if this wasn't too long ago. It could be awards or grades you achieved for a sport or a musical instrument. You can also include things like a first aid certificate or a clean driving license. And finally, your references. So I would recommend that you don't actually state the details of your references, but you just put the phrase, which you can see in the PowerPoint, which is references available upon request, so that your employer knows that they can get in touch with you to find out who your references are. But I would recommend that you have two referees available. You should contact your two references in advance to let them know that you'd like them to be your reference and so that they can expect an email or phone call from your employer. Your references can be someone like a lecturer, maybe a manager at work. And if it wasn't too long ago, or you're still at school, then it could be a school guidance teacher. Try to avoid using your family or friends as references. They do look for professional references if possible. So here is an example CV to give you an idea of the layout. So it is important to have consistent formatting throughout and to have clear headings so it's easy for the employer to read. And here are some useful websites to help you write your CV. My World of Work has a CV builder which might help you with the structure of your CV. And also Prospects has some useful information about how to write a CV. So check these out as well. Thank you very much for listening to my session about how to write a CV. If you'd like further support with writing your CV, then contact us at studentsupport at nescall.ac.uk. Thank you.